Hey guys. Hi. I don't think he needs an introduction. No. Uh, <laughs> okay. How are you doing? So good. How are you? Nice haircut, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. I know I'm like a person. <laughs> <laughs> so what's wrong with quitting this season? <laughs> uh, well, I guess. Well, Quinta doesn't exist this season, really. We start with a guy named Ryan, who I like to refer to as Ryan. Uh, uh, he has a different outlook on the world than Quinta ever did, I think. Uh, Quentin was always waiting for the sky to fall on him, and I think Ryan has a, has a rosier view of the world, and now he, and this character has been thrust into the hands of a murderous psychopathic child beast thing and um, is is uh, getting a, a crash course in the idea that magic exists. Um, I don't remember what your question was. <laughs> so what do you, uh, what's it like to kind of play somebody totally different? Well, for that reason, it's cool. It's cool to um, someone who is in the spirit of the person he was before. He um, comes with, with the same. No, let me take that back. It's a, it's the same spirit, but I think the way that he responds to stimulus is is, is very different. Um, uh, we're doing sort of like a hard reboot in that like we get to see these people experience magic all over again and coolly do it a brand new way. Uh, I think Quentin was skeptical and um, kind of perpetually disappointed with the things that he learned and found out about what magic was because he needed it. It was something that he needed to solve the big problems in his life. He, he wanted a quick fix and it couldn't do that. Um, and so it was disappointing for that reason. Uh, Ryan doesn't know that it exists in the first place. Would never, I don't think he's the kind of human being who ever really thought about magic other than when he read Lord of the Rings and was like, well, that's sort of silly, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, like, so uh, it's just, it's fun to get to experience things from the whole new angle. Starting at the, you're starting at the bottom and you're building it up to a higher level of excitement, as opposed to going down. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's interesting that like you're talking about like a hard reboot because like, there's so much growth. I mean, obviously we had like a little bit of a reboot this past season, right, with the with the um, the puzzle episode. Um, where can you, are we going to see any kind of like you know um, return to uh, with the direction we went in terms of this career? Of his queerness. Yeah. Um. Well, so su <laughs> supposing that Quentin comes back. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think what's what's that? If he never did, he might not. I. We're pretty early <laughs> in the season so far. I've been promised nothing. And I've been promised nothing. I play this guy named Brian Guy who's covered in blood 90% of the time. Uh, <laughs> um, I think the question of Quentin's queerness is an interesting one and one that um, we don't have to talk about. Okay, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I, think that's what's, I think that's what's refreshing about, about it is that it's... Uh, I, I believe that uh, sexuality is a spectrum, and I think Quentin falls somewhere in the middle of that, and I don't think it's something that... I think he's anxious about a lot of things in his life, and the fact that he's not quite anxious about that is, is, a, is a little bit remarkable, and, I, and something that I am choosing to lean into. So one of my favorite episodes from last season was the one where you and um, uh, Elliot like grow old together. Yeah. Um, what was that process like, and you know, how did you guys work on that? One of my favorite, I will say the same thing, like our, one of our favorite episodes to shoot is like our favorite one to read. We're so excited to get to do it. Um, it's a very fast paced show that we're on uh, with high stakes, very life and death oriented. And 
um, exciting to get to have an opportunity for these characters to have small struggles that build up to change your life experiences. Uh, which is not something we get to do on the show often. And there's so much character growth that happens in that episode. Um, a lot of stuff. Um, Quentin and Elliot have, have a very profound relationship uh, in the books and one that like the show uh, it some, sometimes crosses over for just because of time, right? Uh, we allude to them being here in place, but we don't have the opportunity to see it often. Um, and this was the first time we got to do that. So it was a little bit um, of a dream come true for like Hale and I to finally have the opportunity to like really investigate those things about these guys who we fell in love with when we read the books. Um, to actually do that was, was a treat. It made me cry. What's that? <laughs> it made me cry. It made me cry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, reading it made me cry. It's, uh, it's a very, very good episode written by one of our writers named Mike Moore. Uh, he's, a, he's a really, really talented writer, one of the best on the show. Do you think that Quentin's relationship with Alice is redeemable? Uh, uh, <laughs> their relationship will never be the same. Um, but that's life, right? Like, you wouldn't expect it to. They're very different people now. They've, they've hurt each other in, in ways that I think surprise both of them. Uh, I think they're intrinsically entwined. And I don't think that'll ever go away. I don't think they'll ever not be a part of each other's lives in some fashion. Uh, but even if you've read the, the novels, um, uh, it's ambiguous. Uh, it, it's the, she died and came back to life, and he's now, especially in our show, has the, at least the wisdom of someone who's 120 something years old. Um, uh, it's a different person. He's been married. He had a child. His wife died. His child grew old and left. His, he fell in love with his best friend who had died. Um, and he was responsible for saving and destroying magic and, and maybe the world. Like, there's there's a lot that has happened. So, uh, can't be the same, but probably still exists. <laughs> what do you listen to play? Like acting that kind of so to speak, like playing somebody who has gone through all of those things and still maintaining your, I mean, what you started with. Um, I think because it can, you know, it, it, it seems like it's something that you can do very like good, being like old and wise in a young person's body. Or yeah. Into that for you. Well, I don't think anyone's ever done growing. Um, and I, uh, my relationship with my grandparents and like older people that I know, uh, they're not done, and they don't feel old, and they don't they don't even necessarily feel wise most of the time. You know, I I, uh, I think it mostly comes into play in the way that you respond to stimulus uh, because something has happened to you numerous times. Like. Um, the way that it, I think that Quentin specifically like interacts with the world and experiences like anxiety, you know, is not something that is the same with this new uh, knowledge and experience. You know, um, it's not gone. It's, it's something that is um, biological in some ways. You know. Um, but it just comes with more experience. Like, I don't you know. The, the, the stimulus that makes sense. Yeah. In terms of, like, knowing that things are going to be better. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. As always.